Good morning and happy Sabbath. We want to welcome all of you viewers once again to this Sabbath program. This being our last Sabbath of the month of May, we want to thank God for his care, his protection, and his love, and above all, his ever-abiding presence with us as we have gone through this situation. We pray that today's service will be a blessing to each and every single one of you. We want to welcome you and we encourage you to share uh, our YouTube uh, link uh, together with our Facebook so that um, as many people as possible will be able to get blessed with the program. We will begin our program today with our uh, Sabbath School Bible Study uh, that will be led by Elder Dan Ouma, who has been our moderator and assisted by two of our other members. We also are privileged to have one of our choirs or sing groups here in church, Heirs of the Kingdom. They will be blessing us with their music today. We are also very privileged to have Dr. Ray Kessis, uh, who serves at the University of Eastern African Baraton as the Deputy Vice-Chancellor in charge of student affairs will be ministering to us today on prophecy-related issues, and we pray that all of us will be blessed today. We look forward to your viewership and pray that all of you will be blessed by our service today from beginning to the end, to the honor and glory of Jesus' name. Let's pray as we begin the program. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for your continuous presence with us as we have ministered to many of your children known and unknown to us across the globe uh, through this online service. We pray that once again as they tune in today, and as they view and listen from whatever setting they may find it themselves, we pray that uh, you will have a special message for them, uh, be it the adults, be it the children, uh, be it uh, whoever it is who is listening. We pray that they will be blessed. Bless our service, bless every participant from the beginning to the end, to the honor and glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We thank God for being faithful, for keeping us safe. And we are almost completing the month of May 2020. I take this opportunity to welcome you to our study of the Word of God this morning. Before we proceed, let's pray. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you this morning of Sabbath as we want to look into your word. We would want to invite your Holy Spirit to guide us. May you be with us and talk to us in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. In the panel to discuss the lesson this morning, I have two church elders. I'll give each to do a self-introduction. Welcome. I'm um, Elder Samuel Gwenga. Welcome. Happy Sabbath. I'm Elder Eric Omeruka. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Our sign language interpreter is Brother Julius Otieno, and I'm Dan Oma. Be blessed as we share together. Uh, elders, uh, welcome to our study, and uh, last uh, time we were here, we discussed creation, and our focus was on Genesis as foundation, part one. Today we are looking at creation still, but in another context, and we are still focusing on the book of Genesis. Now to start our discussion. Psalms 19 verse 1, the Bible says in New King James Version, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. And the Genga, to start us off, what do you make of this text in relation to creation? Thank you very much, Elder. Well, uh, this statement, we get it in the book of Psalms, and uh, 
it tells us something about heaven. So we know God created heavens and earth, and in his creation, we all understand it was to give him glory. And so, in the psalmist telling us, again, he is repeating to us that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handwork is a sure confirmation of what the Bible is telling us about creation. There are foundations. This earth has foundations. This earth has firmaments. And all is meant to give glory to God. Thank you. Elder Eric? Yes, sir. Something to add, please. Well, uh, from this text, you look at the heavens yes. and you will see the glory of God declared. If you see anything else, yes. change your lenses. Mm -hmm. Number two, when you look at the firmament, mm -hmm. you know who God is as the creator. Yes. So for me, this text is uh, one that complements Genesis chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 1, which says, in the beginning God created. Yes. This text reveals God mm -hmm. as the creator, yes. the architect behind the heavens that we see mm -hmm. and the firmament. You look at a beautiful work of, uh, of work of art yes. and you'd want to know who did it. Yes. So you appreciate nature, you mm -hmm. appreciate the firmament, you appreciate the heavens. Yes. yes, it reveals to you God as the architect. Amen. He does Amen. masterpiece. Amen. Now, if that is so, Elder Genga, mm -hmm. does the Bible throw out science? Because through science, we get to learn a lot about the world, the laws of nature, uh, why things fall and don't fly at a target. When you, I drop my pen, it, it goes down. Mm -hmm. Those are based on laws of science. So that, does the Bible therefore dismiss science or... What is the place of science in relation to uh, creation? Thank you very much. Uh, a good scientist would always prove God right. Mm -hmm. Because science has always discovered yes. what God had laid his hand on. Mm -hmm. And the amazing nature of things, how they function, mm -hmm. It's the, it's, it's the ability of God only. Yes. But unfortunately, the devil has made it a pride on some of the scientists mm -hmm. that what they detect or what they have discovered mm -hmm. becomes supreme above God. Mm -hmm. And so, to some people, science is above God. Mm -hmm. And we tend to worship Science, and we believe so much in scientists instead of believing in God. Mm -hmm. That is how the devil has misdirected us. Mm -hmm. But for sure, any good scientist, mm -hmm. you will be amazed in the wonders of God. Yes. For example, a neurologist, mm -hmm. how does the brain work? Yes. Which scientist has ever confirmed the brain and is working? Mm -hmm. Nothing, nobody. Mm -hmm. Only God knows. Yes. So when we look at it, a scientist would, would see a neuron, yes? Mm -hmm. But how it works, mm -hmm. we will only understand. But what makes it work mm -hmm. is God. Mm -hmm. So God is above all. Thank you. So in other words, you're saying that uh, the discoveries of science mm -hmm. should lead us to God the Creator. Amen. But sometimes you find that uh, what science holds as true is not what the Bible holds as true. Mm -hmm. Elder Eric, yes. can you respond to that? What do we do in such a case? Thank you. Uh, you see, we only have science because we have something that has already been created by God. Now scientists are making their studies, their research, yes. based on what God has, has done. Has done yes. In other words, it means without God, there would be no, no science. Yes. So like Elder said, uh, in my thinking, whatever it is that scientists would do, yes. 
they only reveal more about the handiwork of God's creation. Yes. Any science that goes contrary to what God did, I think, is misguided yes. and is misled. Yes. And that knowledge, God in giving knowledge to men to yes. even become uh, good scientists, yes. is a means of uh, making that which was not revealed by himself, mm -hmm. he has given wisdom to scientists yes. so that they would make our life even more comfortable. Mm -hmm. So any science that goes contrary to God, we should rethink. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, today there have been arguments that, that tend to pop what they call holes into the Genesis account. And they, they tend to, to argue that the Genesis account does not give a scientific view of the world. For example, the notion that the world is flat, yet science has proved beyond doubt that the world is round. It's, it's not actually it's spherical. It's not actually flat with, with, with the four corners as implied. I don't know how true that is, but in our study we are going to find out more. It's also been argued that the accounts in, in Genesis 1 uh, and 2 borrow a lot from mythology. That the writer of Genesis probably relied on the myths in the Near East and put together those ideas to present as, as the truth. That certain cultures have influenced what we actually find in, in the book of Genesis. And so it, it's not easy for us to say this actually is the true account of creation. Mm -hmm. But beginning with the concept of the earth being flat, Elder Eric. Yeah, I, I have seen uh, the argument that is poked on uh, the biblical account. The, the, the argument from the book of Revelation chapter 7, yes. verse 1, where we have uh, four angels standing in the four corners yes. of the yes. earth yes. to hold the wings, mm -hmm. that uh, they should not arm uh, the earth. Yes. Now, I think uh, we need to look at the text in context. Yes, yes. Actually, the argument of the corners there mm -hmm. would, would not mean what we call corners in English or, yes. or maybe with, with science. Yes. It is quoted out of, of context. Yes. The argument there, or the purpose of those angels was to hold the wheels and uh, to show the whole were yeah. not actually that one was standing somewhere, another one was standing in another corner. Yeah. We have north, east, south, and west. Right. But even if you look at if you look at the compass, mm -hmm. they are not corners. East is, east is not a corner, yes. and uh, neither is north and south and west. A more or less direction. Yes, yes, more direction. So it's not the, the Bible does not argue that the earth is flat. Yes. Elder Gabriel, I, I know you you have. Something more to add on that. Thank you very much. When I looked at this uh, and I was asking myself, why, why would the Bible record four corners? Mm -hmm. And actually it is done twice, because if you look at the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 7 and 8, yes. again it mentions the four corners. Yes. Oh, then I came to learn that uh, the Bible language mm -hmm. For the process, for the sake of interpretation, yes. for the sake of understanding, it had to communicate something that could be consumable yes. to the listener. Yes. And so it makes a, a softer language by mentioning the four corners because mm -hmm. it would be so difficult to make somebody to understand that the angel is standing at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. It would be difficult at what particular point, and, and, and people would go to know which particular point is the angel standing. Yeah, yeah. But indeed, to understand that there are directions through which the winds flow, mm -hmm. then that understanding is made easy. Mm -hmm. But the full account yeah. is in the book of Genesis, but again, there's a confirmation. Let us look at the book of Job, chapter 38. Let's just read. The book of Job, chapter 38. 
Job chapter 38 from verse 1, it has something very, very important for us. Yes. Let me read. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Guard up now your loins like a man, for I will command of you and you answer me. Now listen. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare. If you have understanding. Yes. Who has determined the measures thereof, if yes. you know? Yes. Or who has stretched the line upon it? On what are its foundation fastened? Mm -hmm. Or who laid its cornerstone? Mm -hmm. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Mm -hmm. So, you see, in other words, God is responding to Job from the argument which we all know. Yes. And on that basis, God made the foundations. Yes. And elsewhere, we would also learn that the earth is spherical. That is uh, reading Job 26, 7 to 10. Thank you. Right. right. We have, it, it mentions that the earth is spherical. Mm -hmm. But again, with the current mechanisms that mm -hmm. science has put in place, yes. Even man today has appreciated that the earth is spherical. Yeah. So, indeed, the accounts of Genesis mm -hmm. is truly founded. Yes. It is the inspiration that God has given. It is the truth. So, science again confirms. Mm -hmm. But it is unfortunate that the devil has again taken opportunity yes. to mislead man from the understanding of the nature of earth. Mm -hmm. You know, when we misunderstand what God has created, then it is very easy for us to turn our attention from God yes. to what he has created. Okay, thank, thank you, you for that uh, elaborate um, explanation, Elder. Now, Elder Eric, certain myths try to explain how man came into being. Yes. And uh, a particular example is the one contained in this uh, text, myths from Mesopotamia, uh, Creation and the Flood, by Stephanie Dani. Now, this, this, this implies that the gods, you know, having been overburdened with work, decided to, to kill a lesser god, mixed its blood with clay, and, and formed man to help them do the work. In, in that state of violence, we came into being. But what does a biblical account give? And what's the danger in accepting such to be the true position? All right, thank you. When we look at uh, creation in light of ancient literature, mm -hmm especially Mesopotamia. Yes. You see, Mesopotamia is an ancient civilization. Right. And uh, a lot of literature that we have emanates from there, mm -hmm. including even uh, the forms of writing. Right. So a lot that, are, that goes around that we read uh, are arguments that are really, if we were to look at them, yes. we would find they are counterfeit. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, the fact that we have uh, records pagan records uh, about accounts of creation yes. doesn't mean that they are the truth. In fact, that even they were written that early, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that it is the truth. Yes. So if we were to look at uh, Genesis chapter 1 and we compare with this epic from uh, Mesopotamia, yes. there are similarities mm -hmm. and then there are differences. Yes. So when you want to know the truth, sometimes to, to, to have a counterfeit yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. It has to have elements of oh, truth, truth in it. Mm -hmm. If you brought it as a counterfeit, it would utterly be rejected. Mm -hmm. You can't give me now mm -hmm. 300 shillings note, Kenyan currency, mm -hmm. and tell me, get this money. Yes. I would utterly reject it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do a counterfeit, it has to be denominations of 100, 500, 200, 1,000. Right. Now, these epics, the myths that we have, 
though there are similarities, there are also differences. One, in uh, Atrahasis, men are created by the gods so that they serve the gods and then the gods come to rest. rest. But in biblical account in Genesis, God creates human beings mm -hmm. and then when it is time for rest, both of them rest, rest. at the end of creation. Yeah, and, and God rested and then God commanded the man that they should also do what? Rest, rest. and do Noah. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. Though there are similarities about how the creation was done. Number two, in Atrahasis, we have like a minor god is killed, then that blood is mixed with clay, yes. and then we form the, the, the males and we have females. But if you look at Genesis account, mm -hmm. God does not create like that. There's yes. some level of intimacy. Mm -hmm. God loves what he is creating. creating. And in fact, even though it is uh, the conclusion of his work, he does a masterpiece. The best that he's done in the past uh, five days, the conclusion on, on the sixth day. Yes. Then number three, there is no death mm -hmm. for Adam to be created. Mm -hmm. He's only put to sleep, and then Eve is created from the ribs. Mm -hmm. Number three, there is no sign of conflict or violence whatsoever in the biblical account. If yes. you would compare the actual houses, there are a lot of controversies. Mm -hmm. And uh, so mm -hmm. the Bible, the Bible gives us some omnipotent word a God who does his work out of love yeah. and whatever he does, the way it is recorded, allow me as you conclude. Yes, yes. When now Moses puts this in writing, mm -hmm. it's through inspiration. Yes. He did, he did not just pick literature. Mm -hmm. He was inspired to record it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, uh, in the creation account, as provided in Genesis, when God was creating the, 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 the light of the day and the light of the night, he, he does not, of, of the account does not give us, God created the sun, God created the moon, but he refers to the greater light and the, letter, the lesser light. Yes. But today we find these heavenly bodies, the sun and the moon, worshipped in, in a number of uh, pagan cultures and this has brought in the, the, the idea of the Bible having some connection to the pagan beliefs and cultures so that it is as if the, the pagan teachings are informing what we have in the Genesis account. What is your response to this? Thank you very much. We understand that uh, both the sun and the moon were made part of God's creation. Mm -hmm. And uh, he purposed that there would be light yes. for the day yes. and uh, there would be moonlight for the night. Yes. And uh, these were meant for his own glory. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, we also understand from the same text yes. that the moon and the sun designates the day yes. and the night. Mm -hmm. And so we have morning and evening. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk of the day one, day two, day six, the sun and the moon factors in very importantly, significantly, yes. for the purpose of enabling us to know which day mm -hmm. are we in. Mm -hmm. And also, Sabbath, yes. the seventh day. Yes. Now, it is unfortunate that these powerful and very important yes. elements of creation that God meant good to serve his purpose, yes. man has turned them into some gods. Mm -hmm. And so people have gone to worship the sun, yes. and many have gone to worship the moon. Even some people are worshiping the big water bodies mm -hmm. and many other structures. Yes. I have seen in places where big trees, trees that were 
maybe were planted by our ancestors. Yes. They have time to be some God. So, in other words, the devil has limited our perception yes. to reach God. Instead, we are only reaching what God has done what? Has created. Has created. And that is the danger. So when we look at uh, the, the, the aspect of Genesis versus Paganism, mm -hmm. Paganism are the beliefs mm -hmm. which has emanated through some traditions. Mm -hmm. And they are earthly. But they, also, they, are, they did not just come from nowhere. They were directed. Mm -hmm. We all understand God created man, in perfect being. Amen. And everything was to give him glory. Even the sun, even the moon, even the water bodies were all to give glory to God. Yes. But soon after that, the devil came and distorted the entire mm -hmm. plan that God had for people for this creation. Mm -hmm. And so when the devil had, 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 had diverted this attention, then other theories, the paganism now, the traditions now comes up. Mm -hmm. And you realize, while Bible is giving us God's communication and intention, mm -hmm. paganism has contradicted. It's giving us the evil's communication. Right. And so cheating us and de depriving us the ability to see God in his glory mm -hmm. and also to give him glory. That is why when you look at Genesis versus Paganism, Paganism is here a counterfeit mm -hmm. of the true story that God wants us to see in his work. Thank you. Thank you. Elder Eric, before we move to the next part, which I would like you also to, to chip in, yes. uh, going by what Elder has just put out, could it be that that's why God decided on the seventh day nothing was to be created? And the day dedicated solely to rest and fellowship with him because of man's tendency to worship the created. I don't know. What's your take on that? All right, I get you. I get that argument. But by the way, why would a God who is all-powerful mm -hmm. want to have rest? Mm -hmm. Is it because he was tired? Yes. No, he wasn't. He wasn't tired. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look at the person that God is, he doesn't tire. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get uh, worn out. Mm -hmm. So, God in his wisdom knew what would happen in future. Yes. What man would do, what, of course, are under the influence of the devil. Yes. So, he creates rest mm -hmm. by himself mm -hmm. and then determines who is to be worshipped. Worship. Mm -hmm. And then in this rest and, and worship, mm -hmm. he is identified mm -hmm. as the creator, creator who should be Worship. worshipped. In fact, creation gives us uh, a lot. Like uh, an elder has just put it, it wasn't an afterthought that we would borrow from the myths of Sumeria, Akkadians, the Mesopotamians, mm -hmm. and, and wherever. No. Mm -hmm. Our knowledge, when it is little, it will end at nature. Amen. But the moment we widen it, we will look at who is behind nature, who Amen. controls uh, uh, nature. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. Uh, reading Genesis uh, 5 and 11, we, we encounter a genealogical tracing of uh, humanity from Adam to Noah to Abraham. And there is the element of time that is tied to the identification of the genealogies. Yes. So that if I were to identify you, I would, I would say this is Elder Eric, son of X, who was the son of Y, the son of Z, etc. Without necessarily telling you more about the time they took on this one. Yeah. But Genesis is, is, is very unique in the way it brings in the element of time. Of what significance is this to us as, as children of God? Uh, thank you once again. Now, uh, by the way, we would have just a knowledge of who gave birth to who and yes. who gave birth to who. Yes. But again, I think God, in his wisdom, mm -hmm. had foreseen what would happen. Mm -hmm. Today, we argue about the world being millions and billions of, of yes. years. Yes. Now, the Bible, as we say it, is an inspired writing. Right. Now, with all the myths, with all the literature that we have, yes. when should we find our marking scheme? Mm -hmm. One that does not have any error. It's in the Bible. Yes. So the Bible comes with corrections of all the myths. 
the billions and, 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 and the millions of whatever years mm -hmm. we were, we would, we would do good to go back to the Bible. the Bible. So when you tell me my father lived, when he was 30, he gave birth to me. Yes. And then he lived 30 more years and died. Mm -hmm. I would look at his date of birth. Mm -hmm. Then I know he lived 60 years. Yeah. So I would count the 60 years going backwards. I would trace his date of birth if I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I only know my father having given birth to me lived for 30 years. Mm -hmm. But I do not know exactly when he was born. Mm -hmm. So I would subtract from the moment he died going backwards. I would be able to tell yeah. when he was was born. Yeah. Now, if you look at the account that we have referred to in Genesis chapter 5 and Genesis chapter 11, 11. we can trace it back to Abraham, back to Noah, and back to Adam. Adam. And you see, Adam is the only human being that God touched. Right. Genesis records even the number of years that Adam lived. Right. So we could count the number of years he lived, yes. and then we trace back to the time he was he was created. That would give us the starting point. Mm -hmm. Chronology. Chronologically, now we would move and come to uh, chapter 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 eleven. Mm -hmm. We have other people being uh, mentioned. Now, yeah. I think we would do well to believe this to give us facts yes. on the length of time mm -hmm. that the world has been in existence. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and we remember, by the way. Mm -hmm. Adam was uh, created on day six. Mm -hmm. He was created a mature adult. Mm -hmm. He wasn't created a small baby to grow, grow, and then later marry. And then, mm -hmm. of course, the same day, he told about how it was created. Mm -hmm. Both were adults. It, it doesn't mean that they could be several years old. Yeah. We could trace that using using uh, science. Mm -hmm. That for somebody to grow up to be to be to, 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 to be able to marry, mm -hmm. they have developed. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it only limits God when we are given. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and so I, I would I would be right to say, I am done, the son of uh, so and so, the son of so and so, until I reach Adam, created by God. Yes. And God the Father. Exactly. Who created this earth through Jesus Christ, who is my Savior. Right. Therefore, the genealogies would, would help us identify God and his plan of salvation for us. Exactly. Right. Elder Genga, uh, just as we try to uh, catch up with time because uh, uh, it's like we are pressed a little. Uh, creation in scripture. Jesus and a number of New Testament writers make reference to the book of Genesis. Genesis 1, Genesis 2, 5, 11. Of what significance is this to us as God's children? Thank you very much. Well, uh, when you look at this part, creation in the scripture, we would realize that uh, the parts mentioned down the list are all in the new Testament. Right. And uh, many times there have been arguments that uh, the New Testament is the book. And in fact, we have some denominations that have dispelled the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. They make reference to the New Testament because that is where Jesus belongs. Yes. But when we look at Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 to 5, Jesus himself talking to the disciples, mm -hmm. and even when he was talking to the Pharisees, he's making reference to the creation, mm -hmm. male and female, mm -hmm. distinctively, to make it clear. Then uh, you look at the same story in Mark, yes. when they are c coming up with the story of divorce. Mm -hmm. Again, Jesus talking to them, he makes mention of marriage, male and Amen. female. Mm -hmm. So in other words, in all the verses when you look at, even if you look at the book of Acts, we are told God made the heavens and the earth. Romans, Paul speaking to the Romans, from creation, 
of the world. So you realize what Genesis holds has been carried yeah. through the scripture. Yeah. And it is very important. Just like we learned the other Sabbath, mm -hmm. that if we have to understand to the book of Gen uh, Revelation, mm -hmm. we must begin from Genesis. In other words, uh, Elder Eric, does it therefore mean that Jesus and the, the New Testament writers treat the book of Genesis as a true history and not just an imagination or, or a fabrication to, to explain a reality? I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what is, not I think, I believe this. Yes. That Jesus and all the New Testament writers, mm -hmm. and including Paul, uh, mm -hmm. the champion of faith who did very many epistles, mm -hmm. They refer to Genesis to prove it as a reliable Amen. history, mm -hmm. a reliable source of history. Mm -hmm. You see, with the myths, we can't depend on them. Yeah. But with uh, Christ himself making a mention of what Moses did, mm -hmm. remember I said, uh, Moses lived at a time when uh, some myths had come into to be. Yeah. And, uh, there were similarities that are even mentioned. Yeah. Even the life of Moses. If we were by there to go to a, a history class mm -hmm. and look at ancient civilization yes. in Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. you look at the life of King Philip, you look at the Akkadians, yes. the Sumerians, their history, yes. they have similar stories mm -hmm. that look like a copy of what the Bible has. Yes. You would be told there was some king who went and saved a community, yeah. just like Moses also was born and w went to save the, the children, children of, of Israel. Mm -hmm. You would look at the story of Jesus, their history, their myths, yes. their myths have this, but we can't rely on, on them. Mm -hmm. Christ mentions Moses, mm -hmm. and Moses, where did he get his, 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 his source? Mm -hmm. He was inspired. Mm -hmm. Paul does the same, Amen. and all uh, the other writers. So we will do good to refer to the Bible. Amen. Thank you, elders, for your uh, lively participation. I hope our viewers have been blessed. As we close, Elder Genga, just in a sentence, please, because of time. The say Bible. something to our viewers. I want to say the Bible is the most comprehensive and the most instructive history which men possess and can depend on. Okay. Elder Eric. Thank you. Science should lead us to God. Amen. Any science that disputes God, we should rethink it. Dear viewers, God is the creator. Even if we don't believe in him, but when we look at his, his, his work, we look at the heavens and the firmament, we see God. Thank Amen. you. Give us our closing prayer. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are glad and grateful that your presence has been with us the moment we began uh, this study and we've come to its end. We have presented issues that some of them have controversies, but we thank you because you, the entrance of your word gives understanding. Through you, we have learned today it's a source of history that we can rely and depend on to bring us salvation. I pray the Lord in heaven, we will see you as a father of love revealed through creation and through nature. May your presence be with us even as we continue in this service and the other programs that will come. Be lifted on high, be seen of men, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, dear viewer, for being patient and for taking your time to study with us. God still has a lot in store for you today. May you share in the blessings of the Sabbath this day with us. In Jesus' name I pray.